So we all get there. We sit down at the table, going to eat. And the, 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 the waiter comes over and they said, welcome to whatever the name of the restaurant is. I'll be your captain on your, like your food journey or something. Like I'm here to eat lunch, right? A sandwich, burger or something. What is that? You're a captain. What are we doing here? Is the restaurant going to take off like a yacht? Is it a cruise? It didn't make any sense. That messed up my whole day. I can't, I, I, I can't stop thinking about it. It's been hours. Captain of the table. It's a table, not a ship. Steve Wunner here from GetRubix.com. And today we're going to look at the new uh, Entra PowerShell module that was released, uh, which is a new way of interacting directly with the Microsoft Graph uh, for you know Entra attributes like users and groups. Today I'm going to show you how to get it installed, go through some prerequisites and some basic commands. I ended up getting the locks, which I know is can be considered seafood, but that's not the point. I don't need a captain to eat that. Get Rubik's, solving for the modern workplace. Okay, so the new Entra PowerShell module is here. Um, came out fairly recently. And basically what it does is it lets us uh, kind of go through, um, be able to query attributes in Entra. Uh, things like users, groups, um, you know, and, and hopefully be able to work this into some scripts when we are, uh, you know, going through and creating some custom stuff. Because just like America runs on Duncan, Intune runs on Intra. So yeah, this is basically going to replace the deprecated Azure AD module, and it's built on the Graph SDK. So let's talk about how what we got to do to to set it up. All right, so we're going to open PowerShell ICE to talk about this. We'll make this a little bigger. Um, the first thing we have to do is we have to make sure we have the ability to we have the ability to install pre-release modules. Um, so, for example, Microsoft Graph Intune allow clobber. But you see, there's no allow pre-release. So how do we do that? OK, so what we have to do is we have to make sure we've updated our package module. So first we're going to do install package provider. Uh, that's going to be NuGet force. And we should have that, but that's going to get us the most updated version. And we're also going to do install module PowerShell get. And that'll be force allow clobber. So this will basically get us the most up-to-date versions of basically install module is what we're what we're installing. Uh, we'll remove the old ones, PowerShell get, and package management, of course. And we'll import the new one. Import module, PowerShell get, minimum version is 2.0, of course. And we will import package provider PowerShell get same thing. All right. So now if we were to say import, uh, sorry, let's do install module. You see, we have the allow pre-release option now. So that takes care of that. The other thing we do is we're going to need some uh, dependency modules. So we can actually do this in one shot here. We're going to call this required modules. And this will be, we're going to make this an array. I'll, I'll jot them all down and then just jump to the end. Okay, so those are all the modules we need. So we're going to say for each module in required modules, if get module name module list available if it's not there we're going to install it install module name module force all right and it looks like i guess we have everything because it didn't install anything all right so we'll clear that out all right i'll put this in the github too so you have like one package for it so now what we're going to do is we're going to install the module Microsoft Graph Entra. 
repository is PS Gallery and allow pre release and force. Okay, and we're just going to import that. Import module Microsoft Graph Entry. All right, so now that we have everything there, kind of clear that out. All right, so what we're going to want to do is connect Entra. So we'll say connect Entra, and we can set the scopes, and this is a good way to make sure you have permission. I'm just going to just do user read all. Okay, and if you're prompted to sign in, then obviously sign in with your credentials. Um, let's try get Entra user and we'll hit the all parameter all right so that returned all my users uh, it's pretty easy to see display name id mail user principal name um so you know pretty nicely organized here and because it's powershell we can do some uh we can you know pipe out our own strings if we're looking for something. So so we can do get entra user all where object display name is like Bob. And then we just pull up Bob. Um, we could even trim that down a little bit. Select object span uh, select objects we can say display name and mail so now when we do it we just get the objects we want you should be able to query anything that's in the graph so if we head over to the graph explorer and we want to look up Bob Okay, that's Bob. Mail, phone, user principal name. Okay, let me switch to the beta to get more information. Uh, let's go to mail. We can pull his, let's see here. Let's do usage location. There we go, US. So, you know, even though the default is going to only return certain attributes, you can pull anything you want from the graph here, right? Um, so let's do usage location, mail. Um, we can do the security identifier, security identifier. And we'll pick one more weird thing. Let's do his surname. All right, there we go. All right, what about creating a user? So suppose we want to use this to create a user. And think about, you know, right now we're going to run it as a single line, but all the things you can do in the future to automate this. So first thing we'll do is we'll call connect enter again, but we want to make our scope user read write all. Just to make sure we have that. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a password profile um because we're going to force this user to you know change it on the next uh the first login so password profile equals new object type name microsoft open azure ad model password profile our password profiles password so actually if I run that that should create the model so let's just call that and show you what it looks like if I'm open up oh, typo there we go so now if I call password profile 
yeah, we can see exactly what we have. We have some parameters. It's basically a class. So we'll say password profile password is equal to, we'll call it at abc123 exclamation at hash. Good enough. Um, we'll say password profile force change next login will be true. Login uh, equals to true. Okay, so we have that. We have the password profile. It's got the password in it, change, right? We're not enforcing any policy. So now what I can do is I can create some parameters for the user. Parameters. And this will be a script block here. So display name equals, let's say Peter Parker, password profile equals password profile, user principal name equals Peter Parker at rubixdev.com. Count enabled. True. Uh, there's one more required. Okay. And the last required property is the mail nickname. And we can call this new user. Okay. So now that we have that, we would just say new entry user um, at user parameters so if we call that look at that we now have an ID and a user and let's go check that out so I'm gonna come back here I'm gonna refresh this and there's Peter Parker look at that okay now the last thing we can do is assign a license to Peter so let's do user um peter parker at rubixdev.com um actually i'm gonna pull up bob's um get yeah, intra user license detail bob freeman at rubixdev.com select Objects. Actually, no, we could just hit our view that. Yeah, so it's this developer pack E5. That's what I want to, that's what I want here. So I'm going to put skew equals developer pack E5 because that's what I want to assign to Peter. So I have my variables there. The first thing we're going to do is create uh, another license. Uh, we're going to create another object off of the class. So this is a license object so we're going to call it license is new object type name is microsoft open azure ed model assigned license cool um so we're going to take the license skew id equals Get entra subscription subscribe skew where object and this will be the skew part uh, skew part number is equal to skew. And that will be the skew id so let's see if we can grab that so our license uid so now we're going to create an object to hold that so we're going to say license object is equal to new object type name microsoft open azure ad model assigned 
licenses. Assign licenses. It's plural this time. And now we'll say the license object add object add licenses equals the license. Now to, to uh, uh, you know affect any attributes of a user instead of get, we're just gonna set entry user license object ID is Peter Parker and the assign license is is the license object. We run that. Oh, what happened? Signed up. More spelling errors. Gotta be careful with that. Let's try that again. Okay, so we have a bad request. Okay, so you can see here we figured out what it was. Uh, I can't assign a license for a user without uh, a usage location. So we can try to figure that out here. So let's do get intra user object ID is user select object usage location. Okay, there isn't any there. So we're gonna set that. Um, we're gonna say set intra user usage location. So we're gonna say set entry user object ID is user, usage location would be US. So now if we get, we call the same command from above, now it's US. So if I run this up top again, look at that. Now we were able to assign the license. And if I go back and I'm gonna refresh all this, and we go down to Peter Parker, we can see he has the developer E5 license that I have. So hopefully that gets you started with uh, installing the module, getting it up and running, kind of knowing our way around, and just start thinking about things we can do with it, right? Um, could already tell that once we start integrating this into other broader solutions, it's going to give us a lot of flexibility, whether we want to create, remove a user, switch groups, move licensing, assign licensing, right? A lot of good stuff we can do here, as well as modify the user attributes themselves. So, you know, let me know your thoughts on this. It's still new, which is why we like to get in there and, and take a look around. And we'll be seeing you.